We're back taking a look at Solaris 11. Um, as promised, we're going to be looking at the Solaris desktop here today. Um, so how to, you know, you installed via text, how to get a GUI up. Sorry for the delay in getting this out. Uh, the laptop where I do my video recording, the hard drive was failing. And uh, so I did not want to overstress it until I got a replacement. A replacement hard drives in here, as you see the VM where I record through. So this is this is my one and only Windows machine. So I, I do this in a VM, um, you know, Slackware, of course. Uh, new hard drive. So I was thinking I could have done it on the O2, the SGI O2, but the resolution would have been off for doing screen recording. Over here, I can do 1080 on the SGI. I think I can max out. Oh, it'd be 1280, 1024. So probably not the best for uh, for YouTube. But I do have the the analog audio board in there, so I could have done microphone input. So let's get uh, a GUI up on our uh, Solaris V11 VM here. And more annoyances. Again, I probably touched on this in the first Solaris videos. You can't just log in as root um, normally. So let me. Uh, Minimize that so we can get a, a better view here. Let's take a look, see if we can find the uh, the package here, and we will install it. So. As a while, while this is doing its thing, I'll explain a little bit of the story. So, I, what was this? I guess about a you know, couple weeks ago, I'm recording this specific video, and I get it. I get it done. I'm transcoding uh, on the on the outbound, uh, ready to upload, it. and that's when I started having all these disk errors. And uh, so, I had to treat the disk with a little bit of kid gloves. Um, in fairness, it is a you know three year old disk that's been been heavily used. So, got a new disk. Interesting. Uh, when I forget what Seagate. Uh, you know, shingled, so it's got a, a big cache, and you know what was cheap and, and same dayable on Amazon uh, for a one terabyte drive. But it, it's interesting that they're using this uh, shingled technology, and it's fast enough for what I need, um, especially because this laptop has uh, SSD, you know, M.2 as well for uh, for when things really need to be speedy. So I had I had recorded this this video um, the other day and uh, a couple weeks back and had all these problems. But one of the things that I was depressed to find out is going through it, right, so this is this is a redo, um, is that you, CDE does not seem to be available for Solaris 11. Now there's a way you can get to it, um, basically, you know, it, it install it as a third party thing, which I think is really kind of crappy on the part of Oracle. It was bad enough they got rid of, of OpenLook, which is still a viable window manager slash desktop environment and the tools are still really good you know that's the great thing about x windows is you know i run twm you can still run you know an 80s era window manager in the modern day x is great so they got rid of open look fine now they get rid of cd you get with solaris Dex desktop which is essentially gnome and that's great i think it's a good implementation of gnome i don't use gnome gnome one of the reasons is I run Slackware, and GNOME is available only as a third party for Slackware. But I do XFCE if I need a, a proper desktop environment, or as I said, TWM uh, for when I'm doing doing actual work. I just find it's a lot faster. So you see, this is pulling down a lot of stuff here. So we're we're pulling down about six hundred and well six hundred twenty four point seven megs. Um, which is quite a bit of stuff. So it's bringing down, uh, bringing down a lot of packages. Um, so at this point, I'm going to pause the recording as I always do while this downloads. I'm going to have a cup of coffee, and I will be back to uh, talk more about this as we move forward. We are back. Uh, the desktop has been installed, so I'm going to give it a reboot here. Uh, make sure everything takes effect. Uh, you shouldn't technically have to do this but we will uh, reboot it and hopefully this will uh, this will bring up the Solaris desktop 
uh, after we get that up, we're going to put guest editions in. Uh, take a look at the desktop a little bit, see what's uh, what's included. One of the things I do like about these big packages is it makes a, makes a backup for you uh, after you've made these changes. I think it's a pretty nifty feature. So, way to go, Solaris. Um, my general opinion is, if you were... Unless you had a specific need for an official Solaris desktop machine, probably go with one of the open Solaris variants. Um, I like Triblix. It's nice, small, lightweight. Um, it's, a, it's a great little uh, operating system. I guess you can call it a distribution. It's a distribution of, of a Lumos. I, I called it open Solaris earlier. It is a Lumos. Uh, so I, I would that would probably be my take, but uh, there's no reason you can't uh, can't use the the official Solaris. Again, I personally I would prefer Solaris 10. So let me log in here. And we'll get the guest editions added. I wonder if it automatically picked up that that was a virtual box video. And let me resize. It may have done so. Now. So we're going to put the guest editions in and uh, talk about it a little bit. So. Gnome. Yeah. Add the guest editions. So it mounts automatically. Uh, Solaris Volume Demon is actually pretty cool. Where to put it? So we use the old classic uh, package add. And we want to give it all. Um, yeah. So hopefully we'll be able to go and to uh, to get a larger view here. And once we get the guest editions in, that was a pretty quick screen lock, I have to say. So let me uh, log out here. So the video seems a little slow. Uh, that is because we are doing this session over X remotely. Um, so it wouldn't be this slow in uh, in direct usage. And let's see if that picked up the. So there we get a nice full screen, or, you know, it's resized appropriately. So not the, not the speediest. I probably didn't configure this VM with quite enough horsepower. Um, but let's take a look at, at what you get. Um, you get gedit. Uh, you get the GNOME terminal, which is not bad. Um, it's not, it's not my favorite, uh, you know, Xterm replacement. Um, you know, Xterm in and of itself is pretty good. I'm preferential to the XFCE terminal. Uh, so my my order of preference in graphical terminals, or, you know, Xterm replacements, is uh, XFCE term. Console from KDE, really nice. Um, followed by Xterm itself. Xterm still has in place. Then Enlightenment's E term, you know, things like RxVT. Um, but a lot of times when dealing with retro stuff and you really want the good you know, VT100 emulation of um, of Xterm. Okay, so you get Firefox, Thunderbird, you get an image viewer, Glade, of course. Um, let's see. Office, you can get a viewer and a dictionary. So you get a, you know, some basic stuff. You get G parted, so 
you know, Oracle is embracing kind of the, the Linux way of doing things. Gparted. They can't make their own uh, partitioning tool. But still get Xterm here. Oh, redraw is so slow. Um, let's take a look at the file browser. Device driver utility. Okay. Well, that's pretty interesting. Cool. Uh, uh, places. So this this is pretty stock. I don't know what GNOME GNOME experts could could say what uh, what version this is. Two maybe. I don't know if it's three. Um, I like the stock background. Um, you know this is this is this is workable. It certainly looks a lot better than CDE, but keep CDE around. Keep CDE around. Um, so this is not going to be a uh, uh, talking too much about the the UI. I mean, this is Oracle's version of of GNOME. Oh, we'll find out what version it is. Yeah, yeah two dot thirty. Um, but let's see. What we care about is package manager. So it's nice they they do provide some graphical tools to do a lot of uh a lot of useful functions here. So let's see about uh installing a package to the graphical package manager. Games, see what games they have. <laughs> Not a whole lot. Oh Oracle, you spent so much time. Put some games in there. We'll install GNOME games. So I don't know, for whatever reason, I've been, uh, I'm, maybe I'll make a video talking about what games I play, but I've been playing uh, some old, old SNES games uh, under emulation. Things like Castlevania 4, um, kind of fun. Uh, but the main game I've been playing a lot of uh, on the, the, the Windows machine here is uh, World of Warships. You know, so if you've seen some of my other videos, I military history buff and like uh, you know some naval engagements and things so so that is fun and this is you know I'm glad they included a graphical package manager it is uh, not the speediest um, but no matter I, I do like that they've put that in there can we do anything else while that is uh, that is running so yeah, pretty uh, pretty painful to install some uh, some games. You'd think that'd be pretty pretty quick. Uh, while that's doing, let's add um, oh the lag is so slow. So one of the one of my gripes is the latest uh, Slack run. I think this is a, a valid security concern. Is they pulled out some of the fast ciphers um, from SSH. Um, you know those that that could be dealt with. Um, I just haven't gotten around to doing it. But uh, it would be nice if they put uh, put some of the things I used to use Arc for, which is nice and fast, uh, great for doing this sort of thing. Get over to root here. So we've got two two sessions here. So let's let's throw TWM out there. Can I make this, uh, make the text a little bit larger here? I'll give it a comment. WM and let's see. User bin TWM. Interesting. 
They didn't put it under X11. Okay, so we should now have our new session. One more thing I want to take a look at in the package manager. So now we should have some games. So it took, you know, two minutes to install. Not a whole lot of interesting games. Let's take a look for GCC. GCC 5.3. We want to install GCC 5.3. So one of the things I'm evaluating is, uh, you know, other platforms. I use a, a mixed model database called Orango. Pretty nifty database. Lets you do documents, uh, key values, and graphs. So really, really uh, kick-ass database. Um, but I want to evaluate it on a Solaris platform. And one of the things is it uses, what, C++? Oh. Okay, so problems here and we won't, won't worry about that probably in another video we'll look at uh, getting GCC 5 and Orango up uh, but let me log out here and see if we can get our TWM session so I, I didn't narrate that well but we created a TWM.desktop file here in user share X sessions which should if I remember GDM correctly um, should give us that session There we go, TWM. Hope this works. And it did. Cool. So there's a tip if you're doing an alternate window manager and uh, there's a bit of software that's needed for the screen resize. Then you do a VBox client all and that's a little bit better. So isn't that more convenient to be able to do a control right mouse button to bring up the window, the, the menu to resize things rather than those two steps in the GNOME terminal. Well that's it for, uh, for the Solaris 11 Solaris Desktop. Um, turns out as easy as uh, installing the package Solaris Desktop, or the package set, I should say. So, if this video was a little little off kilter, I was just just getting my my machine set up with the new the new hard drive. So I wanted to get this out because I know it's been a little bit behind, um, but more stuff is coming probably even later tonight. So uh, there'll be another one out out soon. Um, probably not on Solaris, but we'll do more on Solaris. We'll, we'll build GCC5. Uh, GCC5. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, check for next videos.